Meanwhile, Juventus are in action tomorrow. That game against Crotone is live on ESPN Plus at 2.30 Eastern. And it's just the first time we've really had a chance to chat with the boys about Juve and terrible performance, of course, midweek against Porto. And it's a running theme, isn't it? You take a look at who've eliminated them over the years. Obviously, you go back to the quarterfinals, uh, Real Madrid, then Ajax the next year, and then last year, Lyon eliminating them in the round of 16. Uh, Gal, you just reflect on that game against Porto, and it's very difficult, really, apart from the fact that it was only 2-1 to take any positives away from it. Yeah, I think the only positive takeaway is a learning experience. And, Dan, I have a little something to say here. All those people, remember that little run that Juve had leading into this when, uh, um, when they were being more defensive and, you know, they, they were defending deeper and they were nicking a goal at the other end or Ronaldo did something unthinkable and, and so they got the win. They said, oh, look, it's like Allegri's Juve. Oh, look, it's more balanced and all this nonsense. It's not more balanced. It's nonsense. And when you see, and the reason Juve don't want to play that way anymore is what we saw against Porto. You give up a stupid goal at the beginning of the half, uh, out of the blue, and then all of a sudden you're chasing. And you're not mentally set up to do that. You insist on playing a 36-year-old uh, Giorgio Chiellini twice in a week, and then he's got to come off. Um, and this is the problem. This is why they cannot play that way in Europe. Um, hopefully this is even more of a wake-up call, and hopefully the reaction here is to double down on that. Uh, I still think they can advance. The, 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 the Chiesa goal, I think, is a game changer in terms of the, the in, in terms of the away goals rule. But goodness me, you got to ditch the past and you have to stick with this plan and simply go out and figure out how you're going to do it better. Otherwise, you're never going to grow. Matteo? So the reason why uh, they gave the ball away and it was Rodrigo Bentancur had to sit a little bit back deeper is when there's no Leo Bonucci making those passes, they don't really have that outlet from the back. And I know Bonucci's had a poor season defensively, but he still has that passing range. And Bentancur isn't really someone who plays in that position. And he's been making that mistake all season long. He's not a deep line playmaker. I think what we have seen though is Arthur is actually a pretty big miss for this Juventus side. Without Arthur, they only play two central midfielders is what we've seen now for the last few matches and they're just not as balanced as they were when they had three central midfielders and Weston McKennie was not fully fit either. It's just a completely different squad. The 4-4-2 that Pirlo has used at times because of the injuries in the center of the midfield is the same unbalanced team that we saw in the first half of the season that was inconsistent and not picking up the results they should have picked up. And well, let's take a look at how the bookies have things set as to who is going to go through uh, remember Porto with a 2-1 lead, uh, Juventus with that key away goal and as a result they are still uh, quite heavy favourites, 13-8 on Porto at 6-5. Uh, Jürgen, who would you have going through? I still think that Juventus will manage it, you know, obviously a 1-0 is enough to go through, um, but it's, it's also... We, we still forget, you know, with Pirlo this is a transition year and they will go through these kind of uh, up and downs and, uh, um, and try to figure out, you know, how to kind of build the team for, for next year as well. Um, so I still think that they can make it. Matteo, when you hear transition year, do you like that phrase? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Jurgen is right. It feels like a transition. But when you have Cristiano Ronaldo on the books, you should never be in a rebuilding mode. When you have a player that is there for only a limited amount of time, that you got to win the Champions League because you were facing teams consistently that had that once-in-a-generation forward man that changed the course of the game. So it's unfortunate. It really is. Because you have this guy that you brought in for a, an objective, which, by the way, you also need luck in the Champions League. I mean, just look at PSG's five-year plan now becoming a 10-year plan, it's not as easy as just spending as mo more money than everyone else. You need other things to go your way. You need the draws to go your way, a little bit of luck and all that stuff. But it really does feel like Juventus can't make any excuses. They still have a very good team that has made mistakes. The sporting director has made mistakes, hasn't gotten the right midfielders given uh, the, the, the top heavy type of side that they have, the quality that they have in defense. Yes, they've dealt with injuries, but so has other, every other team. And it does feel a little bit like a team that wasn't assembled in the best way possible, that has a glaring weakness, which if you look at the three best teams in Europe, let's say, they don't have the same kind of weakness in any department like Juventus have in the midfield. Gab, you agree? That Juventus are, uh, have a worse midfield than the three best teams in Europe? 100%. 
Um, what about equally, the point, the matter? I mean, you know, I, can, I can you ever be in a transitional year when you've got Cristiano Ronaldo in the team? Uh, you have to be because you, you, you simply have to be because the old way wasn't working. So it's up to you to figure out how to change it. You cannot spend your way out of it. That ship has sailed. All that money, you have already spent it. Cristiano wants to win, but Cristiano is also not adult. He would much rather play on a team where, where there are players around him, where there are players that are supporting him, where there are players who are committed to going forward. Good teams know to how to attack and how to defend. This is another thing that bugs me. Porto are running away with the Portuguese league. They've got like a, a, a double-digit lead, so they attack all the time in Portugal. But look, when it wait, comes wait, into wait. Europe, they know when to defend and they know when to attack. That's where you even want to get to. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.